What is going on YouTube and welcome to another video. In this one, I'm gonna be installing a six puck ceramic clutch along with the pressure plate and lightweight flywheel in the 370Z. I'm gonna be making these upgrades to get me ready for forced induction in the coming months. I'm also gonna be installing a slave cylinder elimination kit from Z1 Motorsports to take out the factory OEM slave cylinder, which is known to go bad after a while. So I'm gonna take that out now before I end up on the side of the road without a clutch. So if you guys haven't watched my previous video on removing the 370Z transmission, make sure you follow that link up above that way you guys know how to take the transmission out to start with. This video is just going to cover the installation of the clutch and flywheel as well as that CSC kit. So let's get started. Alright guys, so we're going to start by removing the clutch and flywheel from the car so we can install the upgrades. What you're looking at here is the front of the pressure plate. Um, this pressure plate has a bunch of fingers on here so that whenever you disengage the clutch, your slave cylinder presses against these and pulls the face of the pressure plate away from the clutch and disengages it. Um, so we need to remove this plate, or rather this pressure plate, to be able to get to the clutch itself. Uh, now when we do take it off, your clutch is going to want to fall. So in order to hold it in place, you should have like a little alignment tool here that most likely would have been provided from your clutch. I ordered it from Z1. Um, if you did order it from Z1, you should have your little pilot bearing sitting on it as well. Set this aside for later, we'll be installing that in a minute. Just take your alignment tool and insert it into um, the little spline there. That way it holds the clutch in place when we take it off. And then to take this pressure plate off, there's a total of nine 12 millimeter bolts. Here's six, and then there's another three up top. You wanna to start off by doing the center one from each of those pairs first. And then you're gonna do one from each of those sides, and then you'll do the other three. Let me go ahead and just put the numbers on the screen here, showing you the order that you should undo these bolts. So with that, we'll go ahead and get started by removing this pressure plate. Now here is the clutch itself, the uh, factory one that we're going to be removing today. You go ahead and just take your alignment tool out while holding the clutch in place, and then you can drop your old clutch down and set that aside. And with that clutch off, it reveals our flywheel here. To remove this, we are going to have to take out, um, I believe there's a total of eight of these T55 Torx uh, bits here. Um, I'd recommend getting a three quarter inch or half inch drive with a T55 Torx on the end of it. We need to undo all of these. Now, um, the flywheel, if you try and put a lot of torque on these to take them off, it's most likely going to want to spin. Um, I can kind of move it with my hand a little bit, um, but you want to be able to hold it in place. Um, so to do that, I'm going to try a little trick. Um, I hear that you can sometimes put in one of the transmission bolts um, as well as one of the bolts that was holding on the pressure plate and then you can wedge a crescent wrench in there to try and hold the flywheel in place. So I'm going to give that a try here to see if uh, I can stop the flywheel from spinning as I'm trying to take this off. So I've got that crescent wrench up here jamming the flywheel in place. Um, these are in fact T55s, so I've got my T55 uh, Torx bit here on the end of it. Um, I imagine these bolts are going to be on tighter than what my impact wrench can uh, do. But we'll give it a try here and see if it works, otherwise we'll have to use a breaker bar. Yeah, so it looks like the impact's working. Here's that T55 bit end there. Um, we'll go ahead and undo the rest of the bolts. Just remember before you undo the last one to hold the weight of the flywheel, that way it doesn't just fall on top of you. So this is what the back of the engine looks like without the clutch and the flywheel and everything on it. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to take out this pilot bearing that sits in here. That's this sort of brass ring that sits on the inside. Um, there's a couple of options that you have for this. I'd highly recommend you actually get a proper um, pulling tool for pilot bearings. It's going to make your job a lot easier. Um, there is an old trick where you can like pack this thing with a bunch of like grease and bread supposedly. Um, and then you can stick your alignment tool inside of that and then try and pound on it with a hammer. At the very back of this uh, pilot bushing, there is a um, like a lip, and the pressure from you hitting on it is going to cause that grease uh, to kind of get forced behind the lip and then push it out. Um, I haven't actually seen that trick executed successfully though, so I am going to use a pilot bearing puller, um, which you can rent from a local auto parts store. Now the problem with this one is I can't actually get it to fit inside that bearing, um, even with it uh, closed all the way. 
So I'm gonna have to modify it a little bit by shaving off some of this, some of the lip here of the puller to see if I can actually get it to fit in there and then be able to pull it out properly. All right, so with that small modification to the tool, I should be able to insert this through the uh, pilot bushing now. Um, you wanna make sure you send the tool all the way to the back and then you're gonna wanna expand it out completely. That way it gets a good grip on that uh, collar. And then we're gonna insert the uh, little sliding hammer into this to be able to bump the uh, pilot bushing out of the seating there. All those tools, by the way, that I just showed you, both the uh, puller as well as the sliding hammer you can rent from a local auto parts store. So that's where I went to be able to uh, get both of those tools. Um, with that pilot bearing out, we're gonna install the new one. Um, for that, we're just going to put it in place and then we're gonna lightly tap at the edges with a hammer to try and get it seated and aligned well. And then I've got a little 14 millimeter socket that's just about the uh, same size as the uh, bearing. And I'm just gonna use that to help tap it all the way in place to get it seated. So here we go. All right, now before we go and put anything on the car, we should go ahead and pre-assemble the pressure plate, clutch, and flywheel. So just place the uh, clutch approximately in the center where it's gonna be located and then you're gonna to wanna to stick your pressure plate on top of that. You wanna make sure that these alignment pins that are on the flywheel line up with your clutch. And then we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and thread in those nine bolts that we took out earlier. We wanna pre-assemble this because we need to measure something called stack height. Um, if you're gonna be using the Z1 Motorsports uh, Slave Cylinder Elimination Kit, it's really important to know your stack height down to the millimeter because when we go ahead and make some adjustments later using some shims, it's gonna be really crucial that we get that accurate. Um, that way we know how much to shim it so when you push your clutch in, it's gonna engage properly. So go ahead and thread these bolts in. And you're gonna to wanna to tighten it using the uh, torque specs listed in the factory service manual. And I'll tell you about that in a second, but go ahead and get all these bolts hand tight first. And now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and take that stack height measurement. So that measurement is gonna be the distance between the back of the flywheel right here that actually mates with the engine and where these fingers sit, where the um, uh, throw out bearing is actually gonna be making contact with. We need to measure the distance between the two of those. So what I'm gonna do is try and find something that'll fit within the flywheel, something flat that I can lay against this. And then I can use some sort of rod or dowel or something to stick through here. And then I can take the measurement of what this height is. I used a wooden block as a hard flat surface to rest the flywheel on top of. For the measuring stick or dowel, I ended up just using the alignment tool that came with the clutch. I stuck the alignment tool all the way in so that it rests against that wooden block, which means it's at the same level with the back of the flywheel. I then used a rod across the fingers on the pressure plate and made a mark with a Sharpie or pen or whatever, uh, just to be able to get a measurement of what that height is. I then used a set of vernier calipers to make the measurement and subtracted the height of the rod that I used to make the mark on the alignment tool. That way it didn't obscure the stack height results, and this is how I managed to obtain my stack height. All right, so now that we've gotten the measurements for the stack height, I've ended up getting two different numbers here. I tried with one method and got about 81.75. My other measurement was 82.5 millimeters. So we'll just kind of average them out and say that I got about 82 millimeters for my stack height. Um, so now we're just gonna go ahead and take everything back apart again, and we're gonna start putting it all in the car. You're gonna need to remember that number for later because when we go to put on the slave cylinder elimination kit, it's gonna be really important. But let's go ahead and get all this stuff put on the car first. All right, with that new pilot bushing in place, we're gonna go ahead and install uh, the new flywheel, which I've already gone and cleaned the surface of it off with brake cleaner because they did have some oil sitting on there to help prevent like rust and things. Um, so once you have your flywheel cleaned off of any oils, it's time to put it onto the output side of the engine. And you'll notice on here that there is gonna be an alignment pin and on your flywheel, there's a little hole there where that pin is supposed to sit. You wanna make sure that that lines up properly. Um, that's the only way that this flywheel is gonna go in. So we're gonna try and line that up on the flywheel here. And once you got it lined up, you can use like a mallet or something to try and seat the flywheel correctly. 
Alright, so now we've got that new flywheel positioned in place, now we're gonna go ahead and reinstall all the bolts, and it's really important that you guys use some thread locker for this. I've got some blue uh, removable thread locker. You want to make sure that your bolts don't come loose, because if even one of these get out, you can have some serious problems. Um, so I'm gonna use some of this blue thread locker, and I'm going to just put a little bit on each of the bolts, and then I'm gonna hand tighten all of them. And then we're going to go back and do each of the bolts in a crisscross pattern. So like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll show the numbers on the screen here now as well. We're going to go and tighten them in that order up to 65 foot-pounds. I'd highly recommend a torque wrench for this. You want to make sure that you get the torque right so that this flywheel is tightened enough without over-tightening it. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get these bolts on now. All right, so with the flywheel tightened down, we're going to install our new clutch now. Um, you'll notice with the six puck that the sprung hub is on one side of the clutch. That side needs to face the transmission and you need to insert your alignment tool through this end, like that. If you do it the other way, it's not going to sit properly against the flywheel. So we'll stick our alignment tool in to make sure that the clutch is lined up properly. And now we'll go grab our pressure plate and begin to tighten that down up against the clutch. All right, so we've got our new pressure plate. You'll notice that on the flywheel we do have three alignment pins as well to help get the new pressure plate aligned properly. So we're going to go up and try and align our pressure plate with those pins. So with the pressure plate now um, on the car, we're going to go and hand tighten those nine bolts on there and then we're going to take our torque wrench and there will be a series of torquing steps that we're going to do to get the correct clamping force set on this plate. So I've gone and hand tightened the pressure plate on here now and continue to tighten it a little bit with a socket wrench just using some light pressure to seat these bolts. I'm now going to take my torque wrench and we're going to torque these down to spec. So there's two passes we have to do. Um, the bolt pattern is going to be the same as when we took the old pressure plate off. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven, eight, and then nine. And the first pass we're going to, we're going to tighten it down to um, 11 foot pounds. And on the second pass, we do 29 foot-pounds. Uh, that way we make sure that the pressure is set correctly from this plate on the clutch. Um, so I've got my torque wrench set, and we're gonna make the first pass. All right, with all of them tightened down to 11, I'm now gonna make the last pass with the torque wrench sent to 29 foot-pounds. And then with the new pressure plate torqued down to spec, we should be able to remove our alignment tool, and then the clutch should stay in place. And that completes the installation of the new clutch in the flywheel. All right, so now it's time to begin work on the slave cylinder elimination kit. This is the kit that comes from Z1. Um, you'll want to get everything opened up and make sure you have all the components as listed in the components list on the manual. I highly recommend also reading this completely through. There's a lot of important information in here on how to set this up properly um, so that you can avoid having to take the transmission back out later. Um, so there's some really important stuff in here that you should read. Recommend going through the entire thing first. Also check to make sure you have all the components and then we'll begin work on installing on the transmission. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the concentric slave cylinder assembly. Um, I'm gonna start off by taking out this pin here that holds the assembly to the clutch line. There we go, Let's set that aside. And now there are two 10 millimeter bolts that we're gonna take off to be able to separate it. So now we're going to take off this bolt that holds the uh, clutch connection point to uh, the transmission. Um, for this, you'll just need to use a T27 Torx bit, and you should be able to undo this. Set that bolt aside. And then we should be able to separate this connection from that slave cylinder since we took that clip out. You can take this entire piece out, we'll set that aside. I'll also go ahead and take this rubber grommet out, uh, just in case, uh, I don't know if we'll be needing it later, but we'll get it out of the way so we can start installing new stuff on the transmission. And with that line removed, we should be able to remove our concentric slave cylinder. 
We're going to set this aside. We don't need it anymore. All right, so now we're going to remove the transmission front cover, and to do that, there are a total of 11 12 millimeter bolts that we're gonna undo. You'll wanna keep in mind that these four here that will be at the bottom of the transmission, those you need to keep separate. Those are sealing bolts, and they're going to need to be separated for when we install them later. So we'll go ahead and undo those bolts and take off the front cover. All right, so now we're gonna install our new front transmission cover along with the gasket that Z1 provides you. Um, this basically is just a redesign to give you a couple of new mounting locations for some of the new hardware that's gonna come with the elimination kit. So we're gonna go ahead and line this back up now and we're gonna install all the bolts again. For those four bottom ones, we wanna make sure if you have thread locker, you apply some thread locker to those threads just to make sure it seals it up and you don't have oil draining out of your transmission. Um, so we'll go ahead and put this on now. Remember to install those sealing bolts in the exact same four positions. So now we're gonna go ahead and install this pivot ball on the front cover, and this is where that measurement that we took earlier is gonna come in place, because we're gonna have to put some shims on it. Um, I calculated mine to be about 82 millimeters for the stack height, and you need to plug that into this formula that they have here. We're gonna multiply the 82 by negative two thirds, and then we're gonna add 61.5 to it, and that's gonna give us the shim thickness that we're gonna to need to put on the back of this ball bearing here where we got all these shims so that we can work out the exact thickness that we're gonna use. So if you can see there, we got a shim thickness of 7.134. So now we're gonna measure the shims out to try and get as close to that number as possible. So I've gotten as close to 7.134 as the provided shims will allow me. So we're gonna go ahead and put these washers on the ball and then we're gonna attach this to the front cover of the transmission. Also be sure to apply thread locker to the threads of the pivot ball before installing it into the front cover on the transmission. You really don't want this thing to come loose on you. It's also important to torque down the pivot ball bearing according to the manual that Z1 sends you. Since my shimming was over 4.5 millimeters, I ended up torquing this down to 24 foot pounds. All right, so now we're gonna install our throwout bearing onto the bearing sleeve. The um, flat side of it here with the stamps on it should be facing towards the transmission, so you wanna put it on the sleeve in this orientation. And then we're just gonna wanna seat that on there. We need to stamp it on there. You might wanna use like a mallet or something to try and hit the back of this to be able to get it to seat correctly. Um, with that installed now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put grease on a few components to make sure that everything is able to actuate smoothly. Um, so we're going to take some of the grease that Z1 provided and we're going to put a little bit on the splines Some on the sleeve where the throwout bearing is going to sit right here And we're also going to put some grease on the pivot ball bearing I'm also gonna apply a little bit of grease to both of these tabs that are sitting on this throwout bearing collar. That way when the release fork is sitting against it, it won't uh, have too much friction, won't cause a whole lot of noise. Now we're gonna go ahead and install this tab into the fork. Um, for this, you wanna try and get the uh, head of the tab here as well as these two fingers on either side underneath this lip that sits inside the fork. Uh, and doing this can be a bit tricky uh, what I'm going to try and do is use a set of pliers to pinch the fingers together so that they'll slide in a little bit easier. And then I'm going to try and stick it in sort of head first to try and get that top tab um, underneath the inside of the pivot ball location. Um, we'll see how it works. All right, so now that tab is in place. And we've got this tab on here as well. We're gonna go ahead and assemble the fork and the collar together, simply by pulling up on these tabs, just high enough so that you can slide it over and onto the fork. So now the full assembly should look something like this. 
that clip is holding that fork in place so it doesn't move around too much. That way when the fork is actuating, it's gonna bring it back. So now we're gonna go ahead and install this in the transmission. I would go ahead and just situate the back of the fork there towards that uh, port in the side of the transmission so that it sits properly. And slide it over the collar. And then you're gonna mate it up against that pivot ball bearing. If you give it a good push, it should sit properly. And now you're, uh, if you put your clip in correctly inside that pivot ball bearing uh, mounting location on the fork, your fork shouldn't physically move too much this way. It should be pretty tight on the pivot ball bearing. And with all the grease and everything, this should actuate smoothly without making too much noise. So with the fork and the slave cylinder installed, the next thing we're gonna do is uh, undo a couple of bolts so we can put in a new bracket and a couple of other pieces of hardware. We're at the back of the transmission now. We want to remove these two bolts here. If you follow it back, you'll notice that they're the ones that are basically in line with the uh, tuning fork port. So you wanna remove these two. They're both 12 millimeters. It might be easier to get this supporting bracket out of the way to reach them. I'm gonna see if I can do it without it. Um, otherwise, if I can't get it off with my breaker bar, I'll have to use uh, my impact wrench to see if I can knock these loose. So now we're going to install the slave cylinder mounting bracket. That's this black piece here. This is going to slide over that location where we took out those two bolts. You would have been given two new replacement bolts that you're going to use to mount this. Each one has four washers. That's because when you place those washers up, you're gonna to have to put one on either side of both of these brackets. Since we have a total of eight, and the bracket itself should be situated like this. So we'll go ahead and get this installed now. So you can see I've brought the transmission under the car now. That is because it is time to reinstall it into the engine um, because the next step requires us to do this because um, we need to make some adjustments and things to get it to mate properly against the pressure plate. So we're gonna go ahead and reinstall it. I have a transmission jack which makes tilting the transmission around easier to be able to line it up. You do have to try and get it lined up with these uh, guide pins that you can see right here um, as well as get it centered here inside the uh, spline. Um, so mating this up can be pretty tricky. It's one of the most difficult parts of this entire project. Um, but with the transmission floor jack, um, should be a lot easier if you just have a couple of people. It shouldn't be too much of a problem either. You just need to finagle with it until you can finally get it to seat correctly in here. Um, so anyways, we'll go ahead and get to remating the transmission up to the engine. The next part of the CSC elimination install does require the transmission to be reinstalled back into the car. And this is going to be by far the most difficult part of this entire project. I'm very lucky in the fact that I have a transmission jack here which does make it easier to line it up perfectly. Um, it can be done with just a couple of people, but the easiest way that I've found to do this is to try and get the transmission as close to aligned as possible, but to where you can still kind of stick your hand up in between the engine and the transmission. And you can feel around to make sure that the input shaft is lined up with the uh, splines that are in the clutch, uh, just to make sure it's aligned properly. Then you can begin to uh, ease it forward to try and mate back with the engine. You want to try and raise the back of the transmission up as high as possible to get this aligned uh, perfectly. And it's going to take several attempts. I ended up having to back the transmission out and then try and reinsert it several times before I did finally get it to line up perfectly. Just a bunch of patience is going to work best here. Uh, you will eventually get it lined up correctly. Uh, and once you do, you'll want to start securing some of the bolts in place to hold that transmission properly. So the transmission is now back in the car and pretty much mated up to the engine. Um, there's still a small gap there, but once I start putting in all the screws for the bell housing, I'll be able to kind of pull that gap in. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is hand tighten all the bolts for the transmission just to make sure that they all line up correctly. Um, you can follow my previous tutorial on removing these bolts. There should be a link on the screen now. Um, you can use that to determine where all these bolts are located, but I'm just going to reinstall all the ones for the bell housing as well as on the support brace here. That way the transmission is secure in the car. And then we'll resume work on the slave cylinder elimination kit. All right, so I've got all the bolts hand tightened in here, except for these ones at the back. I went ahead and torqued those down so that's holding the weight of the transmission in the back here. Um, now I'm gonna go through and actually torque down each of these bolts to spec. 
Um, this is where it's important that you went and maintained or organized your bolts in some way so that way you remember where each one goes. So now we're going to go ahead and torque each of these down to spec, as I said. Um, the shorter ones in the bottom here, uh, let me see if I can find what the torque spec for those were. So the bottom four should be 47 foot-pounds each. And then the rest of the bolts setting off to the side on the top of the engine as well as for the starter, those will all be 75 foot-pounds. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten all those bolts back together. That way the transmission is held in secure. And then we'll finish installing the rest of the slave cylinder elimination kit here. Be sure to torque down all bolts, including that for the starter as well as the ones for the cross member at the back of the transmission. Also, don't forget to reinstall the bracket that houses the breather tube and make sure to reconnect the breather tube at the top of the transmission as well. You can see my previous video on the transmission removal to find out where this is at. Alright, so I've finished reinstalling all the bolts for the transmission. They're all torqued down now. I've also reinstalled the two bolts for the starter and reinstalled the plate as well as torqued down these bolts here at the back holding the transmission up. So now that the transmission is nice and secure, we're going to continue working on installing the hardware for the slave cylinder elimination kit. So what we need to go ahead and do is we need to take the new slave cylinder that's provided with the kit as well as the anchor. And we're going to go ahead and thread these together. Before we do that, we're going to just take a little bit of Loctite, apply some on the thread, and then we're going to go ahead and secure these two together. Go. I'm going to use a couple of adjusting wrenches to tighten them even further, just to make sure that they won't come loose. There we go. So now we're going to take the slave cylinder and we're going to attach it to the uh, throwout bearing fork here. So we want to have one large washer on this assembly on either side. So I'm taking off the smaller and the larger set of washers right here, leaving one large washer attached. We're going to thread that through this end of the fork. We'll go ahead and reattach our washer on the other side. And I'm just going to leave it loose for now because I'm going to put some thread locker on it again here in a second. But I'm leaving it loose because we're going to have to go and attach this end over next. So that kind of assembled I'm going to unthread this end of the slave cylinder until it seems to match up correctly with the hole, the mounting location here that sits inside the bracket that we installed earlier. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take one of our M8 bolts, we're going to send it through this pivot point here on the back side of the slave cylinder, and then we're going to thread it through that bracket that we installed earlier with those two washers that I just installed on there as well. And then we're going to go ahead and tighten this down. Once again, make sure you apply thread locker just to make sure that the bolt sits securely. So now I'm actually going to remove the nut from the clutch fork because uh, I actually need to salvage um, this washer right here that I accidentally put on. Um, turns out you're actually going to need that washer to be able to attach a little spring, which I'll show here in a minute. But I need to get that washer back. So I'm going to take it out. Okay. And then what you actually need to do is set one of these washers with the hole aside. The other one you're going to use on this end. And I'll show you why here in a second, but make sure you only put one of those washers uh, on this end of the slave cylinder. Go ahead and retighten that nut down. So now what we need to do is we're going to go ahead and remove this uh, bolt here that's connected to the starter because we need to attach that other washer to it. So take that washer now, the one that we just took off, go ahead and put the spring on it. And we're going to set it on top of this uh, wiring harness bracket here. And then we're going to go ahead and reinstall that bolt back on. Don't torque that bolt down all the way yet. We're going to go ahead and locate where that hole is on the other washer. And we want to try and get those two bolts to line up. 
And we're going to stretch our spring so that it attaches to that other uh, hole in the, in the other washer. So it should be something like that. And I'm going to rotate this around until I get the two of those to line up all right. And then I'm going to go ahead and torque down that bolt again. All right, so I'm in the middle of installing the new stainless steel clutch line. Uh, we need this longer clutch line to be able to extend all the way up to uh, where that clutch connection point is, the hard line up there. The problem is that hard line um, is difficult to get to, and the only way to really get a wrench on it is to remove your catalytic converter, or in my case, I have test pipes. Um, that's not very easy to do. I've done it once before. I'm gonna leave a little link to that video up there. Um, it is gonna require quite a lot of work to be able to get those bolts off. Fortunately, since I've already done it once before, all of my bolts are accessible on the bottom of the car, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove them from down here. Um, but yeah, so you have to get your catalytic converter or test pipes off, um, so that way you can get better access to the clutch line up there. So I've got the new clutch line completely installed now, and you can probably see up there that I've got it temporarily secured with uh, zip ties, because I don't really have enough room to work up in here right now to try and get that clip placed back in. Um, so that's my temporary fix. Pretty soon I'm going to be installing new headers. Um, so taking those out will give me a little bit of room to be able to try and reinstall that old clip. Um, so the zip ties are a temporary fix. The clutch line is now installed. I'm going to go ahead and throw the test pipe back in. I'm going to leave this loose for now until I know where all the shielding and everything is going to sit. And then I'm going to try and secure this clutch line so that it's not rubbing up against anything so it doesn't wear the lines out. All right, so now we have to go and bleed our clutch system. We have to get all the clutch fluid through the system, just change it out completely. Um, for this, you'll use DOT4 brake fluid. I'm using some RBF 660 um, because it's what I could find uh, on short notice. Um, so basically what you're going to do is you want to hook up some sort of line to it. I use this uh, a long acre racing products, like little bottle basically to catch all my brake fluid um, whenever I'm doing brake fluid changes. Uh, it will also work for doing the clutch fluid. So I've just got a line attached to it right now. And then what you want to do is you want to use like a small uh, wrench. Um, side note, I happen to have, according to Craftsman, the world's smallest adjusting wrench. Um, anyways, so you're basically just going to use your wrench to uh, loosen up the uh, bleeder nipple that's on the uh, side of this uh, slave cylinder. And then you'll watch the fluid begin to bleed through the system. You want to get all the air out as well as all the old fluid. You're essentially just trying to clean out the entire system, get the old fluid out, and uh, get the new fluid in. Um, the trick to this, though, is you can't bleed too much of it at a time. You really have to keep an eye on what your, brake, or your clutch fluid level is looking like up top, um, because you do not want to introduce air into the system. Uh, if it gets into the master cylinder, it can just be kind of tricky to try and get the air back out. Um, so just keep an eye on that clutch fluid level uh, as you're doing this. So you'll continue to bleed it, and occasionally you'll need to go and pump the uh, clutch pedal. Just try and get some more pressure back into the system so you can continue the bleed. Um, so we'll go ahead and keep doing this um, until we get all the old clutch fluid out. All of this uh, old darker color is gone and we're not seeing any more air bubbles. That's how we know that we're completely finished bleeding it. Unfortunately, at this point I stopped talking to the camera, but I did keep them rolling for a little while. I was just in a rush to get the car completed because I hadn't driven it in three weeks and it was about time to get it off the jack stands. But basically, you're just going to want to keep bleeding the brake fluid until you see that there is no more air left in the system and that you see all the old fluid has drained out and it starts to change color to that lighter amber uh, color that you'll see with some of the newer brake fluid. While you're pumping air clutch, you may want to have somebody visually check to make sure that the slave cylinder is actually actuating properly. When you depress your clutch, it should retract the slave cylinder, which will then force the clutch fork up against the pressure plate to disengage the clutch. With your clutch line bled properly, you're going to want to make one final adjustment to the slave cylinder by undoing the rear bolt that mounts it to the transmission. Then you're going to want to pull on the slave cylinder towards the rear of the car, which will force the clutch fork and the throwout bearing up against the pressure plate. It should be making contact, and then you want to back off by about a millimeter. That way, the throwout bearing is floating just about a millimeter above the pressure plate. It's not making contact all the time, but it's going to be really close, so that way you don't get a whole lot of clutch pedal play. You'll then want to readjust the length of your slave cylinder and then re-bolt it to the car. This process is also documented in the manual that Z1 will send you. At this point, I'd recommend reassembling your shift lever. That way you can actually test for the first time if your clutch appears to be working properly and disengaging and re-engaging from the engine. Go ahead and reinstall your shift lever up top and your shift linkage on bottom. 
With the shift lever reassembled, we can test for the first time if your clutch is actually engaging and disengaging properly. To check if it's disengaging, you want to play around with the gears without pressing your clutch pedal in to see if you can find a gear that doesn't quite allow you to slide into place properly. That's because the gear teeth aren't quite aligned, and it's not allowing you to force the gear over because of the fact that it's still engaged with the engine. By pressing the clutch pedal in, you should be able to then slide into that gear properly. This means that the clutch did actually disengage when you press the pedal. To verify that it's engaging, you can insert your drive shaft back into the output side of the transmission. If it's in neutral, you should be able to spin the drive shaft around freely. And if it's in gear, it should be stuck because you're going to be fighting the engine. This means that your clutch is also engaging properly. Once you verify that the clutch at least appears to be working, you'll go ahead and install the couple of dust shields that came with the slave cylinder elimination kit. There's one that sits in the port that leads to the bell housing, which fits around the clutch port. This helps keep dust and things out of the bell housing area. And then there's a larger heat shield, which unfortunately I didn't take any video of, but the installation of this is fairly straightforward, only requiring you to install a couple of bolts. Um, the process for installing this is detailed in Z1's manual, it's pretty straightforward. You'll also want to make sure you route your clutch line so it doesn't rub on anything. Um, it's really important that it doesn't end up touching anything that's moving or anything like that, because it could wear out your clutch line and could eventually cause a leak. Um, that would be really bad, so just keep in mind on where you're routing your clutch line so it doesn't contact any moving components or anything, and that's fairly secure. Um, at this point, you'll just go ahead and reinstall everything back in the car and drop the car back down and uh, then take it for a test drive. I do apologize again guys for rushing through the last bit of this installation, um, but if you guys have any questions you can reach out to me in the comments down below or you can send me an instant message on Instagram and I can try and answer any questions you guys have. And that is it for the Clutch and Slave Cylinder Elimination Kit install video. I know this one has been a long time coming, you guys. Um, thank you for being patient. I know the last time I uploaded was like three weeks ago. It's just I've been really busy trying to get this thing installed. Um, I didn't expect it to take as long as it did. Um, when I first put the clutch in, I had to take it back out because I had forgotten to measure my stack height. Um, I've been waiting a lot for emails from Z1 because I had to get some details from them on how to install some of the clips, and it's just taken forever. Plus, this video took me over a week to edit in itself. It's going to be over like 35 minutes long, I think, last I checked. Um, but it should be going up tonight. I'm filming this the morning of. Um, the car obviously is back down on the ground. The installation went perfect. Um, I haven't had any complaints about the clutch. I'm actually surprised how well it drives in stop and go traffic and I'll kind of detail that for you guys a little bit more in the next video. Um, if you're not an Instagram follower, make sure you follow me on Instagram. I kind of give posts that are a little more up to date on there showing you guys that the clutch has been put back in and all that stuff. Um, so if you want to stay more up to date with my build, make sure you give me a follow on Insta. Um, so the next video, you guys don't want to miss it. I'm going to be talking about my plans for forced induction, specifically which kit I'm going to be buying. I'm going to talk about some of the new exhaust parts that I have coming in for the car too. In fact, I already have a new set of mufflers installed on the Z right now. Um, I'll give you guys a teaser rev at the end of the video so you can kind of hear it. Um, but I've also got something else I'm going to be putting in the car in a couple of weeks. So you do not want to miss next week's video. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And I want to thank you guys again for watching. And I'll see you all in the next video. Later.